Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. So I'm going to show you everything that's new in Unity 6.1. And you might have seen another video where people just skim over things, but I'm going to go through every big feature and even every tiny feature and even all of those little quality of life features that you probably never even knew existed. And do be sure to comment down below if I've missed anything or if there's anything that you find really interesting because I love hearing from you too. And if you do like this video, be sure to throw a like and make sure you're subscribed because it helps me out massively. And you can also check out my Patreon too, because it has over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. I just wanted to go over the little quality of life changes, because you might look at the menus in 6.1 and think, I swear things have moved. And you'll see the edit assets, component window and help submenus. They've been rearranged to have a more logical layout. So things like cutting and pasting will be at the top and some of these objects will be in just a more ordered list. You'll notice that in the add component section, you will have when you add a new script and you name this whatever you want, it will now pop up with a dialog box to choose where in your asset folders that you want to save this rather than it just placing wherever is the default. Now in add component, when you want to add a generic component, a lot of it was hidden under miscellaneous and it didn't really help you to be able to navigate what it should be. It's now all been ordered into things that you'll find most useful. Unity have also moved the undo history from the edit menu into the window, general, and the undo history tab, which you can pull out and you can see it there. They've got a new menu in window and package management, so you can get to the package manager, my assets, services, and the asset store more easily from the engine. In 6.1, Unity have more easily added the project auditor tool, which I have a full video on, but this is about analyzing your full project with all the scripts, assets, and files in there and giving you optimizations to how you can make this better. You can navigate to the package manager, which is window, package management, and package manager. You can go to the Unity registry and type in auditor and you will get the project auditor tool. You can hit install and I do have a full video that I'll leave down below so you can get all of the details about how this works. But you can get hold of that then navigating to window analysis and project auditor. And then you can just literally click start analysis and it will run through your entire project and try and make suggestions on how you can make this better in, with every single asset you've got with most common issues that people find. And with this just being a blank project, it does give me some suggestions to so always take these with a pinch of salt. But you can see the suggestions that it's trying to make with whether or not you want to disable a splash screen. And it will give you some details, some recommendations, and you can show more details on how this could affect you. Because it will take you directly to documentation and you can decide how important they are. And the tabs on the left will take you to code, assets, shaders, projects and build size and things in there. I wanted to talk about the biggest changes that have come to URP and some of these are also additional for HDRP too. Now specifically for URP, the biggest features that Unity have added, they've added the brand new Deferred Plus rendering path, which has no limits on the amount of lights you can use just like Deferred, but it uses Forward Plus when it comes to the transparency pass and the forward only opaque pass. And what this allows you to do is allows to use a new cluster based light culling, which will actually improve GPU performance when you use a lot of lights in your scene. It's fully compatible with the GPU resin draw and GPU occlusion culling. And I do have a full video on enabling and looking at GPU resin draw. If you want to have a look, I'll put that down below. And that means that it will be fully supported on high end mobile and consoles. And if you do want to enable or disable this, you can make sure you can find your renderer if you go to edit and you go to project settings, you go head over to graphics, you find your universal pipeline asset and you can see it there and you will see that the render will be linked. Mine's called PC renderer and you can see at the top that it's using forward plus, but in this case I can then select deferred plus if that's something that you want to use. You will also notice in project settings, if you go to file project settings, and then you go to player, you'll notice that the auto graphics API for windows now fully supports DirectX 12 as the default option for windows builds. And of course you can use DirectX 11 if that's the features that you need to use along with the additional graphics APIs that unity supports for windows too. Unity now have split graphics jobs, which are integrated into 6.1 which can give up to a 40% reduction on CPU time. They've got brand new PSO caching to reduce stutter time when you're loading levels. And that has a brand new API that you can look over in the documentation to be able to look at their pre-warm shader selection. When it comes to ray tracing, they've got performance improvements 
called Solid Angle Culling, which can improve performance by up to 60% and improvements for reduction in memory when using ray tracing when you've got lots of lights and things going on with a reduction of up to 75% there, depending on what you use for your scene. Another nice thing that Unity have done, if you've seen their build profiles with the add in Unity 6, which is a great way to have different customization and settings between different builds. So you could have nine different Windows builds for various different test builds or something like that. Now I've got my own custom build and what they've added in 6.1 is the ability to override global graphic settings and global quality settings per custom build. So if we tick this little box here, you can see that I've got one here by default and you can add a brand new one based on what you already have, or we can override global graphic settings and you can set these on a per build basis if you need to adjust these based on the build that you have. What you can do is override the quality settings by hitting the little plus box and you can see that this build here would be my PC settings. You can click the little plus and you can see whichever one you have built here, which will be mobile, or you can specify and it will open up the project settings. You can set a new quality level, which you can then choose per build because you see mobile or default has different settings on each. And say you had a build which you needed to push out to users and you didn't want a specific quality setting in there and you knew it was breaking something, you could quickly create a build, exclude that and then build again. And do remember they also added a brand new cloud build option if you're doing any level of automation. So it's much easier to get this going without having to navigate to other places to make this happen. Now you can see that Unity now offer an Android XR build profile and a MetaQuest build profile and the new customizations for the web. And speaking of the web, Unity now have a publish to play button on the web style build, which you click on the public to play and you get a new build to locate your build and be able to publish this straight to their Unity Play platform. Much easier for sharing out your games. Unity have said for a long time that they've been trying to tailor their experience to be able to build out to Facebook Instinct Games, which accesses millions of extra players. And if you go on the add new build profile, you'll see the Facebook Instinct Games option as a brand new build profile. And it does use some packages that are required and you can find additional information in the online documentation, which shows you the setup process configuration, the different templates and what you need to upload your build to Facebook Instant Games. And with their constant push to making web a bigger thing, they've got the still experimental, but it's called Web GPU, and it adds support for compute shaders, indirect rendering, graphic skinning, and the visual effects graph. And you can see the demo in the background that runs directly on the web, and you can find this documentation, which talks about all the new features, and it allows you to bring graphics that have never seen before on the web. There's a brand new feature added to 6.1, which is called a variable rate shadings, and you can find a brand new demo, which is on the GitHub page here. You can download this and play this little demo, and you can see it in here. And this allows you to decouple the rasterization from the pixel shading rate, which allows you to minimize the pixel shading overhead and improve performance by preserving image quality. Because if you see in this little demo here, you can see from the debug view, it prioritizes the main game feature, i.e. this car moving around, and the very edge or the peripheral area of this will have less pixel rate, so you can save on some performance. It is supported across DirectX 12, Vulkan, and other compatible devices like mobile, console, and other ones from there. It is a render feature, which you can see in Unity, which is the shading rate feature, which you can find in the demo. And there is step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the custom render pass to make this happen. The shader graph, so it reads properly, and other information for debugging and setting up and to be able to make sure that this is handled correctly. And in their case, the four times four shading rate is applied to the intensive volumetric light pass to make this happen. So you can see, but from this little screenshot here, the reduction in quality is quite noticeable when you zoom in on other edges because we don't need as much quality because we're, we're zooming past these things which aren't as relevant. And because in this demo they use motion blur, they can get a velocity mask so you can use this within it and you can check out the full shader in their shaders generate VCS shader graph. And with using those motion vectors, they can preserve the quality of the car model, which is centered in the middle of the screen, but they can also reduce the rate of the high velocity pixels, which are affected by the motion blur to save on performance. And you can see on my renderer, I have the shading rate feature on here. And as I say, you can test out this demo and you can see the motion blur and the pixelation when we've got the speed in here and you can try this out for yourself 
to see if it'll be suitable for a game that you want to create. Unity did add a way to reduce shader variance in URP. This could do things like reduce the size and the time it takes to make builds. It can reduce shader load times and reduce the runtime memory that you require. And the first option you have is to be able to strip the level of detail shader variance in URP. So this changes the crossfade keyword so you can actually reduce the number of shader variants by around 50%. The only caveat with that is LOD calculations need to have slightly more processing time on the GPU to make this happen. So everything is a trade-off. And if you want to do this, you can navigate to your URP asset, which is your URP settings. And you will see the option down here, which is LOD crossfade dithering. And if you set that to stencil two by two, then you can make this actually be enabled and we've got another one which strips the fog shader variance in URP and this can be done by configuring the URP configuration package that you can find in the documentation to be able to make this happen. So I do hope you find all of these features useful, you find this video informative and something else you didn't know about Unity 6.1. So be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments, see if there's any features that are suitable for you and then anything that I've missed. So be sure to check out all the links down below to all the best sales and savings and everything you can find in Unity and check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Massive thank you to Peter Steiner, Very Shooter and Party of 10 for their amazing support. And thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.